Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we will solve some of the important questions related to UT which are often asked in interview. So before starting this video, let me give you a brief introduction of myself. My name is Sandeep Anand. I am a mechanical engineer and I am having 14 plus years of working experience. And my website is www.weldingandentity.com. My YouTube channel is youtube.com slash weldingandentity. So with my website and YouTube channel, I used to share my knowledge. And friends, if you want to join my channel, that you can do by pressing the join icon. See, after subscribing my channel, you will see a join icon. So by pressing that join icon, you can join my channel and become a member of my channel and you can support my initiative financially. So let's start with the question answer. Our first question is, during ultrasonic inspection on a 20 mm thick weld, an indication having length 2 mm observed, which is characterized as lack of fusion between the base metal and weld metal. As per acceptance criteria in ASME section 8, division 1, this defect is. So basically, this uh, question is uh, more or less related to code interpretation. So while ultrasonic inspection on a 20 mm thick weld, you observe a indication of 2 mm length. That indication has been characterized as lack of fusion. Means this is final. This indication is lack of fusion. Now, as per SM section at division 1, will you accept this uh, defect or you will reject this defect? So, friends, as per SME section at division 1, this will not be acceptable. Any kind of crack, lack of fusion or lack of penetration is not accepted as per SME section at division 1. So, our answer, option A will be the correct answer. According to SME section 8 division 1, any indication characterized as lack of fusion is unacceptable. So question number 2, what is the name of the curve that shows the relationship between amplitude and distance? So there is a curve in UT that shows the relationship between amplitude and distance travel to reflectors of the same area in ultrasonic testing. So that curve is called as DAC curve. Option B is the correct answer. Option B that is DAC curve that shows the relationship between the amplitude and distance of the travel to the reflectors. So option B is the correct answer. The distance and um, DAC curve, full form DAC curve is distance amplitude correction curve. So many a times it is asked in the interviews. So, full form of DAC curve is distance amplitude correction curve. So, it's a graph that shows the relationship between amplitude of an ultrasonic distance, ultrasonic signal and distance. So, this curve is a relationship between amplitude and distance traveled by the signal to a reflector of a specific size, shape and size. And DAC curve is used to adjust the instrument sensitivity to ensure that signals from the reflectors of different sizes and depth are detected and displayed accurately. Now question number three, which ultrasonic test frequency would probably provide the best penetration in a 300 mm thick specimen of coarse grained steel? So the specimen which you have to test is having thickness of 300 mm means it is very thick and it is coarse grained steel. So which frequency will you prefer? So friends, the less the frequency, the more will be penetration. Hence, the uh, among the options, option D is having less frequency. So our option will be 1 megahertz. Why? Because higher frequencies, higher frequencies generally provide better resolution but less penetration. If you will use a higher frequency like 10 mm, 10 megahertz, then it will give good resolution, but it will, it will give a very bad penetration or low penetration, but we need best penetration. So best penetration we can achieve with lower frequency, with lower frequency of a deeper penetration. For best penetration, we need to use low frequency probe. But there is a problem with low frequency that 
you will get the best penetration, but the resolution will be low. So since we have a 300 mm thick specimen of coarse grained steel, which required good penetration, which need good, good penetration, so you will use a lower frequency that is 1 megahertz frequency probe. Now question number 4. What leads to the attenuation of ultrasonic wave energy as it traverses through a material during testing? So there is a term attenuation in UT. Attenuation is nothing but the loss of energy. Loss of energy or loss of the ultrasonic waves which are emitted by the probe. So why this loss happens? So is this happens due to the absorption and scattering. See what happens. First, attenuation in ultrasonic waves refers to the loss of energy. So this loss happens due to absorption and scattering. These two are different terms. Absorption refers to the loss or to the conversion of sound energy into heat. So while traveling through the test material, the energy is converted into heat and that energy is lost. So this is absorption. And while the scattering means it is redirection of sound waves into different directions due to irregularities or inhomogeneity of the material. So with absorption and scattering, the energy is lost. Now question number five, what characteristics of particular materials enables them to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy and conversely means vice versa. So mechanical energy into electrical energy. So this is nothing but piezoelectric effect. With piezoelectric effect, a material can convert electrical energy into mechanical energy and the vice versa is also true means with piezoelectric effect, a material can convert mechanical energy into electrical energy and electrical energy into mechanical energy. So both are true with the with piezoelectric effect. So certain metals have unique ability to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy and vice versa means mechanical into electrical also. And these materials are known as, P, uh, this phenomenon is known as piezoelectric effect and the, these materials are called as piezoelectric material. So the piezoelectric materials are used in the search units or the probe or the transducer of a ultrasonic testing equipment. Now what is the typical frequency range used in commercial UT? Typical frequency range which we use in ultrasonic testing. So within 1 megahertz to 10 megahertz are the most common used frequency probes. So option B will be the correct answer. See, as I had explained in question number two, the choice of frequency in ultrasonic testing affects the penetration, depth, penetration, depth and resolution. So as I told that with lower penetration, you can achieve deeper, with lower frequency, you can achieve deeper penetration, but the resolution will be lower. Whereas higher frequency like 10 megahertz, you can achieve higher resolution, but the penetration will be shallower. Now question number seven, describe the purpose of couplant. Why couplant is used in UT, in ultrasonic test? So couplant, option D is the correct answer. The couplant facilitates the transmission of ultrasonic waves by eliminating the air gap between the probe and the test material. So what happens? You keep the probe on the test materials for UT. So while keeping the probe, first you keep you know, some couplant like oil, grease or glycerin and then you put the probe. So with that, you can help eliminate the air gap between the test material and the probe. So the couplant serves as a medium to ensure efficient transfer of sound waves from the transducer to the test specimen, enhancing the sensitivity of the ultrasonic waves to internal flaws. Now there is a myth that sometimes people, uh, people you know, they, they are confused that whether this uh, probe is used to clean the material. No, it does not clean the surface. It does not clean the surface of the test material or it does not act as a corrosion inhibitor. Nor does it serve as a sound reflector. It only facilitates the proper transfer of ultrasonic apes from the waves from the from the 
transducer to the test material. So option D is the correct answer. Now question number 8. What is the significance of dead zone? So dead zone is a very important concept in UT. So what is the significance of dead zone and how does it impact flaw detection in UT? Friends, with the help of just because of dead zone, you will not be able to scan or to check the surface near near I mean uh, the surface or the subsurface area of the test material. So question, option B is the correct answer. The dead zone is an area near the surface where flaws cannot be detected. Near the surface from, from the side uh, from where you have put the probe. For example, just imagine this is the test material which you have to test. Now, if suppose if you are putting your probe here. So, the area near the surface means surface and subsurface area on this surface, you will not be able to detect any defect or any flaw. So, this is called as dead zone. This area is known as dead zone. Dead zone refers to the region close to the transducer where echoes from the initial pulse are still being received. And that is why there will be a lag in the system and due to which you will not be able to detect the defects at the surface or near the surface. So, friends. We have come to end of our today's video. I hope you like this video. Please give your important feedbacks and suggestions to improve the video's quality. Thank you very much.